Hello everybody, in today's lecture video we will talk about thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura aka TTP. This condition involves blood clot formation in small blood vessels leading to low platelet count, hemolytic anemia and a potential organ damage. So let's not waste time but kindly subscribe to the channel. Alright, so TTP occurs as a result of a deficiency in a specific protease enzyme called ADAMTS13. This is the enzyme when deficient leads to TTP. This enzyme is responsible for cleaving or cutting von Willebrand factor into two fragments to prevent excessive platelet aggregation in healthy individuals. Let's take a better look at von Willebrand factor. So, what we are seeing is a molecule that is partially unfolded. Von Willebrand factor consists of several distinct domains, including A, D, and C, but our focus is going to be on the A domain. For example, von Willebrand factor uses its A1 domain to bind to glycoprotein 1B on the surface of the platelet. It is also known to use its A3 domain to bind to collagens. And importantly, ADAMTS13 uses the A2 domain on von Willebrand factor to split this molecule into two fragments. Von Willebrand factor is actually synthesized and stored in the endothelial cells as well as mega karyocytes. Now we are going to be referring to these von Willebrand factors as ultra large multimers of von Willebrand factor, and they are only briefly present in plasma after it's released by the endothelial cells. Why? Well, that's a very important question. And I think the answer is due to its high prothrombotic activity. If you let them stay in plasma for too long, they are very hyperactive in binding to this GP1B. And this is going to lead to spontaneous platelet aggregation with formation of a micro thrombi. So it's very important that these ultra large multimers of von Willebrand factor is regulated. And this is where Adam's TS13 is very important to regulate von Willebrand's factor. All right, so now we understand how important it is for the body to quickly remove these ultra large von Willebrand factor molecules. And here we have Adam TS13, which is also known as von Willebrand factor cleaving protease. What it does is that it cleaves this ultra large von Willebrand factor, and it does so at the A2 domain. So it cleaves or cuts it into smaller inactive fragments. This then prevents excessive platelet adhesion and clot formation while maintaining proper blood flow. So the question is why is Adam TS13 deficient or absent? Well, majority of the time it results from an autoimmune attack on Adam's TS13. It may also be due to congenital deficiency or it may be due to secondary causes which I will provide further in this video. For example, Adam's TS13 is synthesized by the liver. So in the case of a liver failure, this may lead to a secondary cause of TTP. So in the absence of Adam's TS13, the so-called ultra-large von Willebrand factor is not properly regulated. And this leads to large and sticky multimers that can bind to platelets and form a microthrombi in small vessels. This would lead to a diminished perfusion and damage to vital organs. All right, so here we are trying to look at some events that may try to explain the clinical manifestations of TTP. We are seeing a narrowed blood vessel by deformed microthrombi. This is due to the excessive platelet aggregation with the so-called ultra-large von Willebrand factor. This leads to platelet consumption and thrombocytopenia. Systemic platelet activation 
can release cytokines, which can cause fever. We also see that there is a reduction in perfusion of vital organs, and this explains the neurological deficits as well as the renal failure that may be seen with TTP. In fact, it's very important to note that microangiopathic hemolytic anemia is very, very important to note as one of the hallmarks of TTP. We see schistocytes on peripheral blood smear, and these are red blood cells that are damaged and fragmented as they try to pass through the abnormally narrowed blood vessels by the formed microtrombi. So these are schistocytes. You can see they might take the shape of a triangle, sometimes the shape of a helmet. And this is a hallmark for TTP as well. Clinical manifestations. So while the classic pentad of symptoms in TTP includes microangiopathic hemolytic anemia, thrombocytopenia, renal failure, neurological impairments, and fever, it is important to note that this classic presentation is seen in less than 5% of TTP cases. Diagnosis. So a complete blood count will show thrombocytopenia with signs of hemolysis, such as an increased reticulocyte count, an increased indirect bilirubin, a decreased haptoglobin, HBs may also be decreased. It's important to assess the white blood count as infections are secondary causes of TTP. Regarding ADAM TS13 activity assay, if the activity is less than 10%, this confirms the diagnosis of TTP in patients with thrombocytopenia and signs of hemolysis. On a peripheral blood smear, we would also see fragmented red blood cells with the presence of schistocytes. Renal function can be assessed. You would like to check for the GFR. Of course, creatinine and BUN may also be elevated. Liver function test is very important in the sense that advanced TS13 is synthesized in the liver. So in the case of a liver failure, this can also lead to a secondary TTP. Combs test would be negative. Imaging studies may be necessary to evaluate organ involvement. For example, if there are neurological deficits, a CT scan or an MRI may be necessary. Clotting profile. This may actually be normal. However, it may be deranged in the face of DIC or a liver failure. Management. The primary treatment of TTP involves plasma exchange with corticosteroids. Additional therapies may include rituximab, capleccizumab, immunosuppressants, and splenectomy. Platelet transfusion is contraindicated and controversial. Thank you, and I hope this was useful. If you enjoyed it, then hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Bye.